Hello and welcome to In Affinity. In psychology, uh, Hugh Rank in 1976 wrote a paper called, uh, was about the, he called his intensifying downplay method of persuasion, where you take the things you want and you intensify them, make them bigger and take the things you don't want to talk about and you make them less and downplay them. So let's try applying that to a photograph. And we'll do this as a full edit, so we're going to go all the way from raw. So let's go to open this one here. There we go. Here's a kind of street scene. Looks fairly inane. So what can we do something with it? You know, it's not terribly exciting. Yeah, there's a guy here. It's probably the most useful part of this. These bits up here are red and a little bit of red and yellow up here because I've got these things up here turned on. So if I turn that on and off, see that shows the clipped highlights. So I need to turn that down. The middle one is for anything that's gone to black. And the other one is where you've got effectively the red, green or, or blue individually has gone all the way up and has maxed out, but not all of them. So to address these, let's go down to shadows and highlights. And this is a classic thing to do. Just turn the highlights down until the red disappears and then just a bit more to make sure it's kind of off white, and not too glaring. Um, shadows, you can play about with light. You can increase that, you know, go too much. You've got no contrast left to play with. So a little bit of that. Compensate with a bit of blacks and turn up the brightness again just to make the picture a little bit brighter. When you do that, watch out for things like this turning up again. So just a little bit more tweak of the highlights to sort that one out. We could do more here, but that's OK. I mostly do editing in photo mode because um, it's more controllable. You know, you can go back and change it. It's non-destructive. So this just goes through the develop process. It's going to be reasonably quick. And there we go. And what I'll first of all is do a crop and say what I'm going to work on. So I go into the, this is kind of interesting here. This person, of course, we need in. So we can bring up this corner here to just put in there. We don't need this door thing down here. There's kind of a natural break of people up there. So maybe we'll just come down over there and bring that up to a sort of reasonable proportion. Um, don't want too much of this over here because it's white and will distract. So we'll apply that. And what we'll do now is say, let's show there's a little bit more light up there, isn't it? We're going to clip that light out there. That's a distraction as well. So take away the distractions, it's the overall principle. And now I'm going to hit Control J to duplicate the layer. So I've got two layers. And the bottom one, let's actually name them, call that. Don't play and the top one intensify. So we'll turn the top one off so we can do downplay first. And how do we downplay things? Well, a simple way is simply to take the color out of it or at least reduce it. To keep it credible, you can't take it all out unless you want that particular effect. We'll use HSL. So now the background is going to go from here across. So this is the brightest person. So I want to take, make, watch them as I take color out. Just desaturate. Where is it going to be? Where it just starts to be. You can see the color, but it's it's less. Let's leave it there. You can also darken that dark, darkening down to tends to downplay, but you don't want to overdo it because that starts to look unreal. So there we go, and we can come back and play with that later. What else can we do? We can also defocus. So let's go to a Gaussian blur. I always click Preserve Alpha and just increase this again. So it's kind of a credible defocusing. They're already, this bit's already defocused, but I want to push this person here into the defocused area. So that's OK there. Right, what we're going to do then is going to do the top one. And uh, we'll blend them together afterwards with a mask. So what can we do here? Kind of the opposite. So let's go to HSL again. And we're just looking at this chap over here. So we want to bring up his guitar because that's nice and colourful. So I'll pick the one of these, then I can pick the picker. Got to do it in that order. Click on the guitar here and that pushes this around. And so then when we turn up the saturation, that guitar is, is affected in particular. Add a bit of lightness into it. And a bit more to the guitar there. There you go, that's brightened that up. His face is, is on to, it's not too bad, that's okay. 
could play with that, but let's move on. Then I'm going to do the opposite of blurring, which is sharpening. So I'll go up here to a high pass sharpen. I'm going to zoom into where the that was. Let's actually, if we click on monochrome and take it immediately to linear light, there we go. And then turn up the radius a bit to sharpen that guitar. So that's up to about there. That'll do. Control zero out again, see if it makes sense elsewhere. Yep, that's great. All this we're going to lose. So that's intensifying. Um, what else can we do? Let's do an interesting thing on this. This guy here is, we'll put in a bit of blur, blur but this is again a grabbing attention because we get attention when we see movement. So I'm going to take a radial blur, which if you increase the angle, it spins things. So I'm going to click on the elbow there, which makes the centre there, so I can spin that. And I'm just going to get his bit of movement in his arm, that's all. So that, if I open this up, I can see that I've got that picked there. So I control I is going to invert it, so this goes black. And I'm going to paint back just on his arm, so I'll go into that. Go to the paintbrush. Make sure I've got white again. And bring this down a bit, and then just... Paint down here for movement in the arm. That's a bit much, isn't it? So let's go back to that one here and reduce that. So it's just a bit of movement there. And I've got a bit of blur on the outside. So I'll go back to my paintbrush, go to the black, make this a bit smaller. Maybe the hardness was a little bit much there, but that's okay. Paint around here so it's just his hand moving. So I've only captured that there. I'll click on that. See, that's the all the bit I've selected. Right, okie doke. We now have both bits. We've got some intensifying up here, some downplaying here, and we just need to bring them together. So we'll put in a mask. And to add a mask to this, I just click the mask layer down here. And now I need, if I... With that which is white will be the top layer, and that which is bottom layer will be black. So I'd put a gradient in. Just blend between them. So I'd click on the gradient. Go from him, him here to like over, maybe about here. We just need to blend out across that. So I click on here. White this side. Black the other side. So there we go. And you can see already what's happening there. That he's bright. And all this has gone back to that faded bit. So we need a little bit of extra um, attention in here. So we want to paint on the mask. So I'm going to get the paintbrush here. I want this to be um, black to punch through to the bottom. I want to make the right square bracket to make this bigger opacity. I'm going to put it around about half, around about 30%, about a third. Hardness 20%. That's all right. That's about soft enough. So I can paint in bits here to round here because these are the reflections. I don't want them to come back out in colour. And I want to paint over this bike as well. Let's zoom into this. And we'll paint over the bike here just to knock that out of focus. We could spend a little bit more time doing this more tidily, but it basically keeps, stops that jumping into our attention. There we go. Control zero out again. There we go. Do we need any more on that? I don't know. That'll do. So, now then, what do we else do we need to do? We've pretty much got our finished picture here. I say we can repaint any more on here if you want. We can play around with any of these controls. If we think the HSL here, think this is too bright, um, I can just turn the saturation down again a bit on this layer, but notice that it starts in the middle again, you don't get back to where you are. So that's going to just overall down as a tad. Um, I can also take any of these uh, these controls and you change the opacity. Uh, I can also go to the top layer here and just turn down the opacity of the overall one. Here we go. Let's take the top one. There we go. Then turn this down here. See that that basically falls into the background there. So I can. Just set that to where I like it. It is pretty near the top, isn't it, anyway? So that's quite fine. So there we go.
it's the intensify and downplay just like you persuade people and this time you're persuading people to like your photograph you can even go in at the end you're going actually i think there's too much over here i'm going to bring this back and i put a break point there which means i'll bring this down a bit and this up a bit just to keep a sort of proportion there you go yeah that's a bit better isn't it anyway thank you very much for watching